Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to incorporate Kibana widgets into your own IoT solution. Let's start out by clicking the Create Visualization button, then Gauge, and then the Source. Now let's begin by selecting the metric count. Now for this demonstration, let's calculate the average speed of our source by selecting the Sample Speed option, and then applying the changes. Now that the changes have been saved, let's split our demo by endpoints. To achieve that, we'll need to select the terms and then the endpoint keyword options. And then let's apply our changes. Now we have five widgets and each of them display the average speed of our endpoints. Now let's create a filter for our endpoints by clicking the add filter button in the top left hand corner. Now for our field, let's select the endpoint ID keyword and for the operator, let's select the is one of option. And finally, for our values, let's select the first and the second gauge. Now with this, we'll be prioritizing the gauges that we want to see over the ones that we don't want to see. So let's save the changes. And now we can see the two gauges that we've selected. So now let's save this visualization by clicking the save button at the top left hand corner. Let's title it as an average gauge demo and let's save. Now let's share the embedded code by clicking share embedded code and then copy iframe code. Now let's switch over to the cock cloud. Now that we're at the cock cloud, let's click home, add widget, general, write HTML widget. Now let's edit it, scroll down, go to the content tab, paste the code and save. Now let's readjust it, give it a few seconds to load. Now that it's loaded, we can see the two gauges that correspond with the selected endpoints. Now this demo is static, so let's convert it to a dynamic one. To do that, let's just create a dashboard controls widget. It's as simple as clicking the add widgets button, going to general and then dashboard controls. Let's edit it, scroll down and remove the control panel that's already there and create our own. Let's label it as endpoints. Under the widgets tab, select endpoints and those endpoints represent the gouges that were imported from Kibana. Now for the path, let's label them as compared endpoints. Now let's allow the selection of multiple endpoints. Let's select APR. Let's also specify what application we're going to be using and what attribute we would like to showcase. And let's pick the first endpoint by default. And let's save. Great. Now let's edit our Kibana widget and sync the state of the endpoints to it. Give it a few seconds to um, load. Okay, great. Now what we will be doing is populating the state of the endpoints to this widget. To do that, let's scroll all the way down to the data sources and select EPR. And for our endpoint ID, let's select our compared endpoints path, the one that we've previously created. Okay, great. Now let's press values and template and add a property. Now in this template, we would want to see its ID. And for the templates data path, we would want to see its endpoint ID. Now the endpoint IDs correspond with the gauges that are in the Kibano widget. Anyways, let's check if it works. Let's move this down and debug it. In order to debug it, we will be using the it keyword, which represents all the variables in the context of the actual content. So let's test it with JSON to see what content is being displayed. And let's give it a few seconds to load. Now that it's loaded, we can see that it shows the ID of each endpoint that is being displayed. Great. For now, let's just save it and see if it actually works. So let's quickly add an endpoint. And as you can see, it does work. Every time we add a new endpoint, the content inside the widget gets updated as well. 
Okay, great. Now let's figure out what URL part we would like to change to populate our said endpoints. Now to find the URL, it is easier if we copy and paste the iframe code into an Arduino software and find the filter condition. Let's paste it into the Arduino. Now to find the filter condition is as simple as finding the word should. This is why we're using the Arduino software in order to save some time. Now you can also use the keyword match phrase or you can incorporate your endpoint ID to identify that filtered condition. Now, if you take a closer look, you'll be able to see that there are too many phrases that correspond with our endpoint ID. So for now, let's just take one phrase, copy it and paste it into our widget under the content tab. So now we'll need to generate a few strings and populate the endpoint ID. Now to do this, we will need to add a templating feature. For that, we will need the endpoint and the index. So give me a few seconds so I can finish writing this code. Now let's check if it works. Let's enter our endpoint ID here and uh, move it down a bit. Let's also uh, close this in really quick and test it out. Okay, and now as you can see, we have uh, these three strings here or the three endpoints. And now what we can do now is take the string, copy it, paste it over here. Now let's also remove this ID and populate it as an endpoint ID. And let's uh, remove this uh, JSON string because we don't need it anymore. Let's also close all of this in really quick. Now that we have uh, the endpoint IDs populated, uh, let's separate them with a comma. Okay, great. Now for the last item or the last uh, filter condition, we would like to delete that. And to delete it, we have to write another string. Now we'll be using the if condition to make sure that the current index is not the last endpoint, the one we're trying to delete. All right. So let's finish off these strings and make sure the current index is not the last endpoint. And as you can see, uh, it is not because it doesn't have a comma. Now we will need to get past uh, the URL limitations from Kibana. And in order to pass the URL validation, we will need to get rid of the spaces. So let's copy the string, make it a single line really quick. And let's remove all the spaces. Okay, great. And now we'll have to replace um, these two match phrases with our last string. Great, there we go. Let's replace those with our current string. Okay, there we go. Now let's try and uh, use it. Let's replace the old iframe with the new one. So let's copy and paste. Let's copy. And then go back to Cockloud and replace it with the new iframe code. And as you can see, we now have the three gauges for each endpoint. 
Now let's just uh, make it look presentable. Let's remove all that access uh, code that we've uh, previously written. And let's just readjust the height and the width to make it uh, look more aesthetic and readable. Okay, and let's just save our progress. Okay, great. Now let's test it. So if we remove one of the endpoints, the widget should get updated. And as you can see, it did. This whole user interface is now interactive. Great, now let's move on and populate uh, an entity with a related endpoint. To do that first, we'll need to create a new dashboard. Let's click the Add Dashboard button and let's title it as List. Okay, great. Let's now go back to the Dashboards tab, edit our home, and change the Dashboard path to List, Item, Endpoint ID. And let's also uh, customize the title of the Dashboard from Home to Item Dashboard. Let's go back to our List Dashboard. Let's add a widget. Let's add a table. Edit it. Scroll down to application and let's select our fleet management application. Let's also add a column. Let's title it name. And for cell content, let's select the metadata name. Let's also check redirect on click and let's select our endpoints here. Okay, let's save. Let's uh, select our second vehicle here. And as you can see, our endpoint ID is populated in the URL. But we want to use this endpoint here so the gauge can display from where it was redirected. Meaning it's appearing as vehicle one, but it's really the second. To achieve that, all we have to do is just change the default value of the dashboard ID and it should update. And as you can see, it did. Now that the widget is uh, completely dynamic, what we can do now in the new dashboard is take the three endpoints and compare with the first. So let's do that. So let's compare vehicle two with uh, vehicle one. And as you can see, uh, the gauges are displayed in the widget. This is a lot more user intuitive and easier to use now to compare your gauges, but we can make it even crazier. So let's say we want to create a new endpoint list here with the same fleet management system, but instead of having it as the same as the one we have here, we would make it selectable. So let me show, let's first edit it. Let's scroll down to the application. Let's select our fleet management system. Now let's enable rows and let's make them selectable. Now let's also replace the variable name from selected endpoints to compared endpoints, as this will allow us to compare all the gauges here. And let's also make sure to uh, save. Let's now give it a few seconds to update and uh, load. So now we can select and deselect any of the endpoints and it will display everything on the widget in real time. This makes it even easier to compare all of the endpoints. But let's say you've selected an endpoint that you don't want to be displayed on the widget. So what we can do to combat that is we can add an actional button at the top of the widget to prevent you from making selection mistakes when trying to compare gauges. Now it's as simple as just editing the widget, scrolling all the way down to take action and adding a property. Let's label it as something like show on gauges. And for the variable name, let's use compared endpoints. There we go. And now let's scroll up to rows and let's deselect update variable and select and uh, let's save now 
if we deselect uh, the endpoint, nothing happens until we go to our actions and select show on gauges. So now if you want to update the widget, you will have to go to the actions and press the show on gauges button. Now we can also change these actions with the map. So let's add the geo positioning uh, widget. Now let's move it and uh, resize it appropriately. And let's uh, edit it. Let's scroll down to the application and select our fleet management system. Let's select DPR, then the latitude and longitude. And uh, let's select the show only selected endpoints. And for the variable to track, let's use our compared endpoints. And let's save. And now, as you can see, once we add the new endpoints, it also updates on the map in real time. Now we can also make it work on the second uh, endpoint list table with the actional button. All we have to do is just edit it, scroll down to map events, and let's label it as focusable items. Items and save it. Now let's go to the table. Let's edit uh, the table. Let's scroll all the way down to the take actions tab and let's add a new property. Let's label the last focus on map and label the variable name as focusable items. Let's save it and then go back and edit the map. Scroll all the way down to the map events and reselect it from the dashboard. <clears throat> let's save it. And now if we try to select a new endpoint and show on the map, it's going to refocus to the endpoints. Now we can also make the endpoint list focus only on a single endpoint. It's as simple as editing the endpoint list, then scrolling all the way down to columns, and then creating a new column as an action. Let's title the column as actions. And for the column order, let's put zero there. And let's expand the endpoint actions tab and add a property. And let's label it as focus on map and variable name as focusable items. There we go. Let's now just save. Now, if you take a look at the endpoint list, you could see that there are three tiny dots that you can click, which focus on the endpoint on the map. Now you can also focus on all of the selected endpoints by using the actional button at the top of the endpoint list. For now, this is it. Don't forget you can try Kyle for free. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.